so we have this magic lantern or magic lamp and we have this cat and we want to get the cat to jump into the lantern somehow this is a good candidate for using a grid warp to squish the cat into the lantern's mouth here but it, it might not be obvious how that can be done so let's let's get into it i'm going to drop down a grid warp node on the cat and we'll view it here now we we want to manipulate the cat but we need to see it relative to this lamp so we're going to be looking at the lamp through a lot of this but we need to connect this to the cat first just to get the format and everything like that so i don't need this many grids to start with i want to keep this really simple so i'm going to turn this down as low as it'll go to simplify this mesh for my starting point and let's look at the lantern and here's the grid and we'll just get started shaping this into a funnel that would funnel the cat into the lantern so I'm gonna just edit these like this And we can grab all the points at once and manipulate them around, drag them up here, maybe scale this up a little bit more. And now we'll start putting a little bit of flare in here by bending these. Let's give it a more visual interest. And try to relax these bezier handles because the tension on the bezier handles will actually influence how much weight each patch here has. There we go. So basically just making a little funnel to funnel the cat. Right down in here. So you can see why I started with a pretty simple grid because I don't want I don't want to have to edit too much and I can always add more points later if I need them but if I start with a whole bunch of points then I'm I'm got a lot more editing to do so let's uh, let's see how this is working look at the cat there we go and right now the cat is compositing right back over itself and that's probably not going to work for us let's it's because here for background it's selected to on source so it's basically just sticking itself back over itself but we could uh, just put it on black which for our purposes will be just fine the cat's alpha channel comes along for the ride so it's all good it's all working so let's go back to our lantern and you'll notice that right now uh, the bounding box is expanding so all of this warp is still happening out of frame even though it's warping outside the format of the cat so that'll work let's do a merge a matte merge of a over b here and then the cat will now multiply to its pre-multiplication as it bends in so that's cool i mean let's keep working on it a little bit before we will rough it in here and then maybe we'll add a few more a few more uh, control points or something probably want to make it feel like it's speeding up as it comes in here so for all of these bezier handles I'm going to increase or decrease the tension to really pull the cat more towards these handles these knots or points as it gets down here and then these I probably want them to have a fairly natural tension maybe it's accelerating a little bit as it as it comes down here there we go maybe we'll get away with that but okay the cat's diving into the lantern but it's not very exciting it's not moving or anything well don't forget that 
nodes happen in the order that they are connected. So the grid warp can easily happen after any other transform. So I'm going to drop a regular old transform right here. And I'm going to use this to animate the cat, the cat horizontally this way to fly into the warp mesh. Because if we look at the, the source mesh, you'll see this is the source mesh for the cat. That's what the cat would fly into if I transform the cat forward into here. But it's going to go to this mesh here is what it's going to be bent into after it's moved forward. So let's look at that because it's a little more intuitive to look at than it is to think about. I'm going to take the transform and I'm only going to move the cat horizontally here. Let's do, let's do this uh, as our end keyframe too. So I'm going to move to 120 and move the cat back out of the the warp, the grid warp. And now I can set a keyframe for these, set key. And uh, should have put that on zero, actually. Let's set key on zero, and then we'll go back to 120, and then we'll move the cat forward, and now it's moving into the warp. Move it forward enough so that it goes all the way into the bottle. There we go. Let's just make a quick RAM player so we can see this. There we go. It's a genie cat flying into a bottle. Let's say you wanted to make the genie cat look more like smoke or have a little bit more visual interest as it went into the bottle. You could easily now add more patches to your grid warp. And the easiest way is to use the plus pen here and just click where you would like to add new lines. And the grid warp will attempt to put these in the appropriate place and have the appropriate tension and everything for them, but you might still need to touch them up. There's no guarantees that it's gonna, then it's gonna pick the exact correct tension. See, here's a good example. These aren't quite right. If you look at these Bezier handles, they're quite, quite a bit longer then how that, that one dropped down. Same with this one. So you might still have to touch them up. If you do add them sort of post editing, uh, editing of the thing, but at least you have uh, a good guide with the other ones that you've dropped in. And now that we've got our whole comp wired up here with our map merge and everything, we can actually interactively see what we're doing. We can, get a sense of if we're getting the look that we want from this thing as we tweak these handles. So there we go. Make it wobble a little bit as it goes through there. Make it wobble back that way when it goes through there. Or you could make it bulge, bulge up a little bit for example, as it goes in, like that garden hose effect, like it's all getting squished back. And it looks to me like the filtering is a little harsh as well. So let's go to the render tab here and we will turn up the or we'll turn the filtering to a softer filtering type. We'll use notch, which is the softest type, and that will make uh, it'll make it a lot softer. It's filtering it. This artifact here, and I'm glad that that popped up because that's a great thing for you to see. That is because the bicubic interpolation is intersecting itself. The tension is too strong in one place, so you, you're you're having uh, it's having trouble interpolating between these two edges. So this is be a, this would be a place where you'd have to be respectful of that of the limitations of a grid warp and make sure that the tension 
that you were creating in some of these shapes was not so great that it was pushing it into some of the other parts of the grid. There we go. It was this bulging that was creating too much tension right there. And I might be getting some of that down here too because of the bulging effect. So that is definitely something that can happen with a grid warp. So uh, watch out for that. Don't push it too far. Um, sub mesh resolution is how many uh, times it's subdividing this into interpolation sections. It's creating more of these mini patches in between here. Turning this up can increase the quality of the render, but it will also increase the render time. Uh, and it may, it may not increase the quality all that much. You might actually want a softer interpolation uh, be, uh, or a, a less accurate interpolation stylistically. It may give you a better result. So I'm just going to leave it at 10 for this one. I think it's fine for this. Let's do another quick uh, ramp layer to see how this one looks now that we've adjusted the filtering and added more, more edges or more cuts to our mesh. Just make another quick ram player. And I'm going to speed this up a little bit too. I, I thought it was going a little too slow. So I'm going to take my transform and lasso all of the keyframes and just drag the end in here to to put the to make that a little faster and set my out point there. So let's make a RAM player of this. Awesome. Cat jumping into a genie bottle. Now you know how. <laughs>